the concept for building the chromosome in the plant was really, it came to me in a very rapid moment when I was a postdoc. I had made a discovery that led me to believe that it would be possible someday to build chromosomes. And the work plan to do that was fairly obvious. I knew it would be a lot of work, it would take a lot of time, but it could be done. So that was in 1993 when I had the idea. And now, 10 years later, we're finally seeing it come to fruition. In general, when I'm choosing a problem, usually what I try to do is think very big picture. I, I think about how technology is happening worldwide. Where are the real slow points? What's the rate limiting step? And, and to ask, if this were different, would it make a major shift? Would it, would it be fundamentally different? So then knowing that, knowing what the big problems are or might be, and I think we can all make our list, world hunger or uh, serious diseases and so forth, then asking, is there a way I could apply my unique knowledge and insight to this question? Is there something I know that might make a difference? And then from there I work down to how much effort would it take, how much time would it take, could, could we do it in practical terms? Genetics is a very useful tool that, that biologists use to unlock uh, the mysteries in, in any particular system. And they can use genetics to understand very large questions like how do populations interact, all the way down to small questions like how does a protein fold. So geneticists can use that tool at, at many stages. The place where I choose to, to use it is understanding how cells work. I was really interested in plants because I think they do a lot of things differently than animals do. They have amazing cell walls uh, that restricts their ability to communicate with the outside environment. But at the same time, um, plants have an amazing ability to, to communicate. They, uh, for example, live in one place for up to centuries. And so they've learned to cope with the natural world, learned to understand when animals are eating them and how to defend themselves, or when viruses attack or bacteria attack. So it just seemed to me there were a lot of interesting questions in plants. Well, the plant I work on is called Arabidopsis thaliana. It's really a mouthful, but what it means is it's just a simple mustard that, that biologists study um, to understand a lot of things about how plants live and grow. And uh, these are the, the plants I work on. See them here. Um, you can see that they're not very big. Uh, they have flowers that are really not very impressive. So why would we work on this? The reason is is that it's a very interesting genetic model organism. It has uh, only a small amount of DNA, makes it easiest for us to study. The plants are relatively small. We can grow lots of them in a small space, and they grow very fast. And for all of these reasons, biologists really think of this plant as the fruit fly um, for the plant kingdom. So with all this explosion of information that came out of DNA sequencing, people have a long list of genes that they would like to move from one individual to another. The reasons for doing this is sometimes, for example, a plant can't grow in a particular condition, for example, if the soil is salty. And you might know of a gene from a bacterium that lets the plant grow in a salty condition. So you'd like to move that in. Or perhaps the plant is sensitive to being eaten by an insect and you know of another gene and you'd like to move that in. Well, in time it becomes hard to move lots and lots of genes in, into one plant. The, the methodology that people usually use is moving one gene at a time. So here in our lab, what we've been doing is really developing a brand new technology in which we would string genes together and put the entire set into, into the plant. And to do that, we build a chromosome. So we just add one more chromosome to the natural set of chromosomes with our own cargo on it. When we think about what would be the advantages of taking sets of genes and putting them into plants versus doing it one gene at a time, there's lots of ways that um, stringing genes together would make things better. Um, in general, the process would be faster. So instead of doing one gene at a time, um, which, which is laborious, you could do several steps at once. Um, this really has a lot of meaning when you think about uh, commercial applications, uh, doing this in crops because every time uh, companies put one gene in, they then have to go through about seven years of breeding. So if they put a second gene, they add another seven years. If you could do it all at once, you save tremendous amounts of time. And so that has really important real world consequences. Well, as the work in my laboratory on chromosomes and chromosome assembly was going forward, I realized at an early stage that this might be useful um, to agriculture in general. 
and uh, knew that the best way to ensure that it could be used by, by the community at large was to protect it in terms of patenting it. And so early on I worked with the university to file patents that would, would give us early protection for the technology. Uh, in 2000, um, myself and two of the members of my laboratory who worked on the project founded a company and then we started the hard process of raising money and began talking to venture capitalists. Um, late in uh, 2001, we um, received the funding to get the company started. And so the university licensed the technology to this biotech company, which is in Chicago. And currently, uh, they're, they're still in business. And uh, there's a team of scientists there and, and management um, individuals who are, who are running that. I think one of the best ways to think about plants and how we'll use them in the next century is to really think of them like factories. They're, they're green factories, they're organic, they take sunlight and dirt and water and turn it into all kinds of things. And um, this is not just limited to vitamins and nutrients, but in fact there's uh, some dozen or more uh, products that are currently being reviewed by the FDA that are real pharmaceuticals that have been made in plants. And these range from antibodies that would be good for fighting cancer to enzymes that help digestion and people who, who lack those enzymes. So there's a whole range of proteins and other kinds of compounds that you can make in plants that have pharmaceutical value. Why would a plant biologist come to the University of Chicago when in fact we don't have fields or tractors or combines or, or an ag school? for that matter. Well, the reason is, uh, here I felt that the intellectual environment was amazing. Um, people are very open to the system you work on. They're not discriminatory about what problems you choose. They just need to be intellectually intriguing. I tend to like to come into an area that's really brand new and think about things in a way that's different than people have thought about it before.